talk to you in more detail about our codon optimization strategy that we have developed over the last six years. So the three major reasons to outsource gene synthesis are for technology access, variant sets as well as complicated structures, but the biggest application is definitely codon optimization for heterologous protein expression. Now most of the genes that we are now shipping out to our customers have been optimized for a particular host. So the question which has always been in the field and still um, exist is, well, how do you optimize synthetic genes for expression? So up until now, it's really been a big black box as no one has done a systematic study to really home in and try and figure out which parameters are important. So here I summarize many of the parameters which people have historically thought to be important when optimizing genes, like you must match host bias, removal structure, and the list just goes on. Now when we first started as a gene synthesis company, we used to match host bias because in all honesty, we really didn't know what else to do. But as the years went on to survive in this cutthroat market, we knew that we had to do a systematic study and really figure out what parameters are important. And so that is what we did. So instead of guessing at which of these parameters are important, we decided to do a systematic study and ask the cell. So to fund this work, we got a grant from the National Science Foundation. And we first of all, we started out in E. coli because E. coli is our easy host to interrogate. Now our approach is to use design of experiment principles to create a diverse set of genes, which in this instance were expressed in E. coli under a T7 promoter. So this set of gene variants we're only changing synonymous codon usage. So at the nucleotide level, they're around about 60 to 70% identical. And this study was done on two very different genes, a DNA polymerase as well as a single chain antibody, and the results were published in PLAS1. So the next slide is just a graphical representation to show you the diversity of the library sets that we create for these studies. So here we show the single chain antibody library and for this library we created 24 gene variants which are indicated by the columns and the rows represent the gene sequence features which we systematically varied in each variant. And the colors represent whether these features were accentuated or diminished in each gene variant. Now when we took these 24 gene variants and put them into E. coli, as you can see we saw a wide range of expression all the way from undetectable up to 30% of cell mass. And we saw a similar result with the polymerase library. So this told us that we were clearly sampling critical sequence variables, but the question was, could we identify them? So we went on and we looked at two parameters which people have always thought to be critical when optimizing genes. And that is the codon adaptation index, or CHI, as well as five prime structure. So CHI, it's a measure of the most preferred codon being used for each amino acid. So a CHI of 1, for example, which many of our competitors actually use when optimizing genes, means that in each position, you're using the most preferred codon for each amino acid. So these, um, these codons are in descending order of frequency. And this makes no sense because if you keep using the same codon over and over again, you're going to exhaust the tRNA pool for that codon and you also can't avoid repeats in your reconfigured sequence. So um, for both gene sets, as we push the chi towards one, we actually saw no correlation with expression. And it appeared that as we pushed the chi towards one, it was detrimental to expression. Now with five prime structure, as we um, push the structure as hard as we could using the codon usage of these two gene sets, we saw no correlation with expression. And this arrow here indicates a series of the single chain antibody genes which were all designed to share the same initial 20 codons. So they all have the same five prime structure, yet their activity spans the whole data set. So this told us that there are clearly other parameters at play which are down in the coding region of the gene like codon usage. 
So that is where we directed our research. We went on and we looked at whether the results that we were seeing, was this due to some local effect, like some sort of deleterious motive, or was it more of a global effect, like codon usage? And to do this, we took a low as well as a high expressing polymerase gene. We divided the genes into three, made all possible combinations, and looked at the expression level. So in summary, what we found was that single gene replacements with a good gene segment gave weak or no improvement in expression, but we, re but we, re we really only saw high expression with the complete good parent. So this told us that it was something global at play, like codon usage, and that's where we directed our research. We went on and we looked at other directions of codon bias that may be playing a role. And so to do this, we used a bioinformatics tool called partial least squares regression. And this tool was used to identify relationships between codon use and expression. So the input is the individual codon frequencies and genes, and the output is the optimal set of weights for each codon that best predicts expression. So the next slide is our algorithm for E. coli. And so the take-home message from this slide is that we can predict expression with high accuracy. Now this model was built with both gene sets, and we built the model with 80% of the data. Then we cross-validated the model with the remaining 20%. And we could cross-validate with a correlation coefficient of 0.65. So it's this score here which tells us how strong our model is. We then went on and we made a new set of genes which are indicated by the green triangle. And as you can see, um, these genes were designed to have high or low expression and the model accurately does predict their expression. And down here is a gene made with a high chi, so a chi of 1. And as you can see, it's far from optimal. So we now have a lot of faith in our algorithm for E. coli that we have rolled out a service offering called Guaranteed Expression. So what this is, when you order your gene from us for E. coli optimization, it's an upfront insurance of an additional $750, but we will guarantee that your gene expresses in the soluble fraction at a detection threshold of 5 micrograms per mil or higher. Now, if we don't detect this level of expression, then we'll give you back your $750 in the, in the form of a credit for a future order and we will help you troubleshoot as to what may be going on. Now, if we do achieve this level of expression, then we'll give you the data report that we used in-house to achieve this um, expression level. So once we published the E. coli work, the business model of the company was to take this rationale into several other hosts to develop proprietary algorithms for the company. So the next host that we looked at was the yeast Saccharomyces, and this work was done in collaboration with Bob Stroud at UCSF, who was interested in expressing human membrane proteins in this yeast. So for this study, we made several gene variants, which again, like the E. coli worked, expressed um, at varying levels of expression. And when we used partial least squares regression, we can see um, we could correlate expression to codon usage with a predictive partial least squares model. And again, we could cross-validate with a very nice correlation coefficient of 0.8. We've also taken the rationale into the, um, the yeast K lactis, and this model was built on soluble secreted protein. And the last yeast that we looked at was um, Picchia pastoris, and this was an interesting study as this model was built um, using a cellulase which breaks down cellulose. So this model is actually built on an active enzyme. And this was also a very interesting study as we looked at three different promoters. We looked at one constitutive promoter and then two inducible promoters, one which was um, intermediate in strength and one which was strong in strength. And what we found was that the best expressors expressed well independently of which promoter was being used. So again, this is telling us that it's something in the coding region of the gene, like codon usage, which is important for expression. Now we move into mammalian cells, and our major focus has been um, in HEC and CHO during the last 12 months. And the reason for that is because everybody in the industry 
um, is trying to express antibodies at maximal levels in these two cell lines. So our initial study was done on a single chain antibody of commercial value. And we did this study in hex cells and then we replicated this study in CHO cells and we found that both cell lines worked the same. So for this single chain antibody, we made 50 gene variants, um, whereby again, we just systematically varied the codon usage for each amino acid. We took these 50 gene variants and we transiently transfect them into HEC293 cells and we assayed by BioCore and Western. Again, we saw wide variation in expression and we could cross-validate with a very nice correlation coefficient of 0.6. When we took these 50 gene variants, which were designed for mammalian interrogation and put them into E. coli, as you would expect, most of these genes were dead because both hosts use a very different codon table. But there were two outliers which did express well in both host systems. So what we have done in the last 12 months, we have taken this space and we have developed an algorithm which works well in both host systems. So if you are a lab who is, say, let's say that you're starting out in phage and then you're taking those hits into mammalian cell lines, you now just have to have one construct optimized using a hybrid table and that construct should express well in both host systems. So the four ongoing studies that we have um, been doing in the last 12 months are listed here. And this slide illustrates the work from, um, from six independent studies in both HEC and CHO cells. This slide is very clustered because in total we have looked at 267 total genes for six different proteins. And I should mention that in each case we did measure transient expression levels. So the six different proteins that we have looked at are a fluorescent reporter expression construct, a single chain antibody, two heavy light chains, channel reduction, which is a light gated ion channel, as well as a membrane protein. And the summary from this very clustered slide is that we see correlation between the preferences for different gene sets and we can build one model that simultaneously explains most variants for all genes. We also have an, um, have an have a initial model for vascular virus expression. So for this study, we, um, we designed and synthesized 48 different green fluorescent protein gene variants, and these were used to interrogate vascular virus mediated expression in SF9 cells. This is only round one here. We do have to do round two and then also perform this study on a second protein to really strengthen and um, flesh out this model. And so here is just a nice summary slide of all the different hosts that we have developed proprietary algorithms for. Now in each instance, these algorithms have been um, empirically derived. We always see huge variation in expression from the variants which we used to um, design these algorithms. And in each instance, we see the same um, rules apply. And that is matching host bias is not optimal and pushing the codon adaptation index towards one is not optimal. And it always comes down to codon bias, which is important when designing your genes for these hosts. So the summary from the gene GPS technology is that we now do have experimentally derived algorithms which now exist for a wide range of hosts and we do have four US patents which have been issued for this technology. Our ongoing work is that we always continue to build upon the current algorithms that we have in place but we also strive to keep that pipeline filled with new hosts. So in the pipeline right now we have cell-free systems, um, we continue to work upon bacular virus, we have, we have potato, we just started bacillus, and also a very interesting study um, to strengthen our mammalian algorithm is that we have collaborated with um, the Gene Therapy Unit at University of Pennsylvania who are looking for gene preferences for different tissues. And so that is it for today. So if you have any questions regarding this technology, here is my email address and you can email me at any time.